Morning folks, Kevin here. Well, it's October 6, 2022, and uh, yesterday Thea and I worked, <coughs> excuse me, worked over here in the western garden plot and got a lot of the, got all of the corkscrew or curly willows out, got some hosta berries out, some red currants as well, and that leaves us so that we can prep those beds. But one of the things we want to do is get some of those curly willows in along the fencing over here. So I'm going to show you the living fence area. And uh, I thought we'd end up using uh, Elon, the Takushi TB290, more than what we did use yesterday uh, to go ahead and make some divots where each one of these uh, curly willows go. So what we did do is I used a tree planting uh, shovel to go directly in between each one of these posts. And we put between three and four curly wills in between each one of these posts down here. And, uh, and that worked extremely well. And uh, so we did that, got those in all the way. Now I did have to use Elon up here at the end where the roots from this big maple is uh, to try and poke a little bit of holes uh, to, to dig a little bit down, but it didn't work out as well because this is all either stone in here or the tree roots. So these ones may not do as well. But uh, because of over the years, all of the, all of the wood chips and compost and underneath this whole area is a who culture pit and who culture again is just earth covered woody material. And so over the years, I've learned that uh, by digging pits and taking uh, tree materials, everything from root balls to the trunks to the branches, the leaves, all of that material, putting it uh, in the ground and then covering it up with soil. And then what I did on top of that was uh, from our township, we were, from, from a tree service, we were able to get a, quite a few loads of um, of wood chips and from our township we're able to get some loads of, of leaves as well. So gradually we're able to build up this whole area in here over the, the last several years uh, where the property really drops off much more than what you see right here as our neighbors. And then this spring we had to take down this fencing because it was all bowing and all and so we straightened up the fence posts down here and I planted a whole bunch of the curly willows, but we had such a drought. Uh, long story short, we ended up replanting a bunch of the ones that we harvested yesterday that have good established roots. So they should do pretty well. The other thing is recently, hopefully I've, I've posted the video by the time this one airs, is that we've been harvesting sand from the canal system down near where the uh, lower beaver dam is. Uh, so uh, besides making a nice canal system down there, we're able to harvest all of this sand to use on different projects. So we're using it over in the western garden plot. And because of the ground uh, undulating the surface here, uh, and because it holds so much water, because it's such fine, fine uh, granular sand, it's almost a powder. So it really does hold, hold on to water pretty well. We wanted to put the moisture right up against these areas that are pretty high and dry right in here. The sand over here helped to fill in some of the voids from the work before. And the sand will gradually get worked into the soil. Uh, all of that organic material that's been here. All of the, the wood chips and composts and all. And so that'll help out. Now I had gone over and grabbed... Uh, the uh, I talked about this the cardboard material but the more that I think about now this is cardboard material that I Thea and I had saved in 2021 most of it she brought home from work and we had it in the dump trailer over the winter months and then because I had to use the dump trailer uh, I ended up dumping that material on the ground next to the sugar shack then I said okay we'll use that cardboard it's still viable uh, we'll bring it up up here and we'll uh, sheet mulch the area where all the grasses and weeds have been growing up so that we can get our fig trees in and all that. Well, the cardboard is already starting to break down so I don't know that it would help to deter 
the reemergence of the weeds that are already here, especially these quack grasses that we got. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to get uh, the uh, grapple hooked on to Mini Me, and uh, and take this out to the Hu Culture Pit. So that's one of the things I'm going to do today. I may take a load out with uh, with uh, the Hulk, the Takushi uh, TL12 V2, the track loader here. And that machine has really done a great job. We hauled all that sand. And if I show video footage of hauling the sand, you'll see that I take a pile of sand. And by the time I get all the way up here, it's you see all the water come to the surface. It's actually pouring off the surface of, the, of it. And that just tells you about the the uh, the particles. This 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 sand isn't a coarse sand. It's a very fine sand, not good for um, concrete mixes. Very very fine, uh, because it holds lots of water. And you could see that when we we're when I was driving back and forth with the with the loader. So, I guess what I'm going to do is uh, get the cardboard out of here. Get that set. Then one of the things I'll do is I'll set a string line and over there I pulled out some of the fig trees uh, because one of the things we're going to do is transplant some of those fig trees over here as well. So and here's an example of one of the fig trees here that I put in the ground uh, a year ago or two years ago and so these things just grow like crazy. I end up damaging some of it but what I'm going to do is put a whole row of fig trees in here. We'll end up putting some lemon balm in here, some chives in here, more comfrey over in here along the fence line that really helps to uh, suppress a lot of the weed development over in there, all the grasses. Um, so, and again, this is all an experiment to see how well we can do with this particular uh, type of living fence. And I'll make it as multifunctional or diversified as possible. Now the figs aren't hardy here in zone 5A, so that'll be a bit of a challenge. But what I'll do is cut these down, and I'll make a video about it. Cut them down really low to the ground. Uh, the roots won't die, uh, and if we get the tops of them insulated, uh, then they'll survive. And next year they'll shoot up new sprint, new new uh, new shoots. And if we're lucky, like those, uh, those ones over there all have fruit on them, or, or at least half of them have fruit on it. That's edible at this point in time, they're mature. So it takes about 90 days for the, for the fruit to mature after it emerges. So that's why it's so important with our short, short seasons to have good stems coming, that are viable sticking out of the ground that can send up the uh, shoots and bear fruit. But we'll go over that in another video. So I'm gonna get to work now. And uh, here we go. Okay, a bit of an update on the progress so far this morning. Instead of going and getting Mini Me, the B2601 uh, Kubota uh, compact tractor out and switching over and putting the grapple bucket on it, uh, the grapple on it as opposed to and taking off the bucket to pick up all the cardboard, I decided it says I had Elon, the excavator, and the Hulk, the track loader here. And since the cardboard, uh, so one of the things when cardboard is dry, it can be a real hassle moving it around and uh, getting it to different locations and all. But once it's been moist, it's been outside for a while, then it sort of folds up easily and you can just jam pack it into a loader bucket. So that's what I ended up doing was pack the loader bucket with three loads, put that over into a who culture pitch, pit, which will work out great. The other thing I did do is I took the elderberry plant that was here that we pulled out yesterday from the western garden plot and I dug a small little hole, well good size hole over here and uh, picked it up, set it in here so this will end up uh, doing well. Now this can be divided in the future, I probably won't ever divide it but one of the things uh, one of the, the uh, interesting aspects of an elderberry plant, similar to many different bushes and trees, is as the roots grow out laterally to the sides of them, they will send up suckers, which can be great if you're doing it as a living fence and that sort of thing, and it really increases the productivity of those plants. One of the things that, that I recommend doing with the elderberry plants is when they get about, uh, you don't want the, the stems to get the size of your wrist. Uh, you really want them to be easy to take out, 
no more than one and a half, two inches in diameter with a pair of loppers and just keep thinning it every two years. So I think that's important. Having said that, I did go ahead and, and lop off one vertical sucker that came up from a lateral root and we'll put that up along the living fence up there along with other ones. Not this living fence here, this, this north boundary here on ours or our neighbor's south boundary but up over there because the deer love them and I just soon draw them into the locations that I want them to eat the, eat the plants that they, they will eat. Uh, this is another elderberry plant is here and yesterday I took a big chunk of it off and today I took another chunk just reached over with Elon <coughs> the excavator bucket grabbed a hold of it and tore it away and so here's what it looks like here real real easy and I could probably get four or five plants out of this uh, which I'll probably divide it into at least three plants and these will all develop into full-size plants just like that big one right up over there so let's see uh, last year this time speaking of uh, different suckers uh, our persimmons tree uh, uh, sent up some uh, suckers from the roots so I dug those up last year and so here we are here these are the persimmons here now there's bindweed on them and grasses growing up in here I can't remember how many are here but I decided to go ahead uh, use mycorrhizal fungi uh, and put it around the roots of each one of these uh, if I think of it there's definitely, uh, I talked about healing in the persimmons uh, trees last year. So it's about a year ago that I did that. And you can see there, there's leaves on these, even though they're completely covered by bindweed. And since I'm going to be working in this area, and since this is a depression here, so this is where the wood chips have been breaking down pretty heavily here, and I haven't built it up as much. So I'm going to come over here, take Elon, dig these up, and then we'll decide, you know, I'm just not ready yet uh, to, uh, unfortunately, I'm just behind on so many of the things around here. So up in the third food forest, I wanted to put a few there and I want to put some down in the forest where I've, where I've been working uh, as well. Persimmons and pawpaws and na native plants of this area that people don't even know about, uh, for, you know, general people that you'd meet on the street aren't even aware that these are native plants that really are very productive and great plants. Uh, so I'm going to dig these up and either we'll heal them in or maybe Thea will pot some of these up. The deer love them so they chewed off all of the uh, all of the ends of them here but you can see they still had leafed out and I think probably 90 percent success right here. So when you dig them up as, as suckers that come up from a lateral root sticking out to the side and they shoot up a, a, a root, there's very, very few uh, supportive roots. If you cut them, you cut that lateral root that each one of the suckers come up from. And so you try to leave as much root surface as possible, but using mycorrhizal fungi, inoculating those roots with those spores can really enhance the chances that they'll be successful. And you want to put it in good soil that's moist. So I did put compost down in here right around the roots when I did it. I took Elon, I believe, and I just sort of made a, a little bit of a trench here. And then I put the uh, all of these bare roots down in there. I put mycorrhizal fungi around each one of the roots. Then I put compost in there. And then I put wood chips on top of it. And, uh, and I just left it. Now, I did put it in a shady spot. Uh, so here we are. We're at the uh, western side of the property here. So the harsh western sunlight, it was protected by these trees. It did get the eastern morning sunlight from over here, but you could see to the south there's more shade in this location as well. When they don't have a lot of root surface and they're a good sized plant with a lot of leaf surface, uh, there's lots of transpiration and so the ground has to maintain its moisture. So removing as much of the leaf, uh, all of, you want to reduce the uh, the evaporative or tran uh, uh, the ability for the for the plant to lose water 
more than what the capacity to absorb water from the roots are. And I'm making this video too darn long. But that's one of the things I'm going to do now is to have Elon come over here, reach in here gently, tease these up, see what our roots look like. I need to keep these nice and moist. It'd be best if I waited a few more weeks. You can see there's bindweed on there now. A few more weeks when all these leaves had fallen. So maybe in the next two weeks we'll have a good hard frost where all the leaves will fall. Okay, I'm going to go see if I can get these out of here so I can make some more progress. I may use the Hulk to bring in some more sand, especially this low spot right in here, because I do want to get my line of fig trees along in here as well. Enough of me jibber-jabbering. Here we go. So I'm not sure about this one. There's a few hairs here, so I'm just going to scratch. Nice green. It's alive. So we'll try again, try to get more hairs out of this. This one's still alive. Amazing. So this is definitely still viable. You can see the shoots. Suckers starting to shoot up from the root surface here. And this one did have plenty of leaves on it. Got lots of bindweed on it now. So that one's still viable. And this one is too. Dang Biden weed. This 
so it's got some decent root. Nice roots on this one. Nice roots on this one. Start buying. Weed is so tenacious here. Okay, roots on that, not great. <sighs> really nice weeds, uh, roots on this one. Let's see another sucker coming up right here. Sucker coming up. That bindweed is so tenacious. And that is not a sucker here. This is a bindweed in there. This is a sucker here. Good. Real good. Han, yeah. can you come over? I want to show you the persimmons. Okay. So, I know I'm asking you to modify your schedule. These are the persimmons. Uh, some of them will be easy to pot up because they're, they've got some roots still attached to them there and the leaves are there you can see. Yep. Uh, some aren't as obvious, uh, but they need the mycorrhizal fungi put with them okay. and all. And so we got a whole bunch of them here. That's a bindweed there. You don't want that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I made some progress today. <laughs> Not as much as I'd hoped to. It's still October 6th. Um, I did get the, uh, the persimmons out of the ground that were over here and Thea has gotten them, uh, potted up. She's just finishing potting them up now and, uh, took a lot of soil. So I had to go get some more compost for them. I did get, uh, the sand to fill in the low voids all down along here, uh, along the, uh, living fence line. And I just hauled out some more of the fig trees. So I'm not sure yet. I look for different things. I, I ended up having some challenges today. One of my hydraulic lines from when I was working yesterday actually got damaged. And so it was leaking hydraulic fluid. So I had to replace some hydro, I, a hydraulic line. Uh, and then I got it reinstalled. And so I came back over here and just got the fig trees out here. And... We'll see what Thea thinks, uh, whether they should be closer to the tree line there. The elderberry bush is here. Everything really should get watered. Uh, but the elderberry bush will actually do fine. All of these plants will do well. Uh, these will all get cut down, but I'm not sure of their positioning. I may tuck them back closer to the fence line there a little bit more, 
see there's some figs on this one. Uh, I've been eating them today as I've been going through, the ones that are nice and ripe. Uh, but all of these will get pruned down quite a bit. Here are a couple of the nice ripe ones here. And they do fantastic once they're in the ground really, really well. So some of these ones won't get to maturity, but these ones will finish ripening over the next, next few days. And so I did haul a lot of the sand up. Basically all the sand that I excavated yesterday, I got up here just to even things out, cover up some of the weeds. But the weeds will come back, and uh, the curly willows really need to be watered here as well. But th they'll survive. And uh, so I'll see what Thea thinks. I may end up tightening these up, uh, and I'll demonstrate later on how we're going to deal, deal with it. So all of them will be cut right down. These will get maybe 12 to 18 inches off the ground. And I want to have it so that when I lay a tarp down, I can lay it down a nice long tarp covering all of the plants. So I may have to tuck those back in a little bit closer to the trees here. We'll see. So I'll have to finish this tomorrow. We'll see what Thea thinks before we go in for dinner. And... Uh, and the excavator, Elon's ready, the excavator, so I may end up using that just to make some quick holes once we determine the exact location. I'll use Mini-Me to get more compost to put in around each one of these trees. I will wait until we get a good hard frost when the leaves all fall before uh, pruning them uh, back to ground level. So that's it for today's video. A few challenges, but we still made some progress and we survived. I hope everybody's staying good and safe. Uh, and I don't know, in, in zone 5A, like where we are, you know, people are in colder zones, people are in warmer zones. Uh, this is, we've been experimenting for a couple of years. We're pl planting the fig trees outside here. And these are brown turkey and Chicago hardy figs. And this is an experiment. We'll see how easy it is to maintain them and how little effort it takes to get them into the uh, in into the uh, condition that we want them at. Sorry, I'm distracted by the motorcycle in the background. <laughs> get them into the state that we want them in, preparing them for winter here in the, in the cold area. So that's it for today's video. I hope you folks stay safe and take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye now.